Hi, I'm back with my Tuck Tech kayak, and today I'm going to be talking about fishing out of my Tuck Tech kayak. So, when I bought this kayak, my uh, primary goal with it was to actually use it as a fishing boat. And I, and I like to fly fish, I spin fish and stuff too. And, uh, and I've noticed some things about the Tuck Tech with fly fishing, and I've been working on making some improvements in that regard. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, one of the problems with, well, it's not a problem, but one of the uh, things about being in a kayak is when you're sitting down in the kayak, you're very, very low to the water, which in essence is like you're, you've waded into water that's waist deep and you're trying to fly cast, which is really difficult because you really don't have a very good angle of attack with the water with your pole. And so what I've been working on is... Um, easy modifications to be able to raise my seat up to get a better angle uh, with with my casting on the fly pole and so I'm going to show you those right now. First one. The first thing that I experimented with was with this. I got this online on Amazon. It's a it's a zero gravity stadium chair. And if you look here, this is going to give me about six inches, four to six inches of elevation off the floor of my kayak. And you just pop that right in there. Fish. Gets me a little bit more height. So just leave that there. And then this is the real kicker. My camp chair strapped to a milk crate. This gets me a lot of elevation above the water, make it a lot easier to fly cast. That's great. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take these out on the water and we're going to see how they do. Show you that. The other thing I want to show you while we're here is my, uh, my anchor system. So here I got my anchor. I did a short piece in the office about my grapple anchor. Here it is. You can see that I have the, uh, the carabiner here. It's tethered to the uh, stern. Got the, uh, got the grapple anchor. The line is going through this, the middle of this carabiner, and then I've got my spool. So, you know, when I drop an anchor, it just goes out, and then take the line, and this, this carabiner has a lock-off on it, so it just locks it. And then when there's pressure on the line, it'll actually, with this little, it'll just sit there, right there on the boat. When I want to bring the anchor up, just undo it, retrieve the anchor, put it in my boat. Reel up the spool, and I'm good to go. 
sometimes when I'm moving around a lot and putting anchor down in the lake, I'll pull the anchor up. Just so it's here, um, just out of the water. And that thing will allow the anchor to just hang off the side of my boat, off the floor, but uh, ready to be redeployed again. It makes it really nice and simple without bringing it all the way into the boat. That's my anchor setup. So let's get out on the water now and see how these things do. One last thing before we get to the water. Some people have asked me what I use for my camera mount on my boat, and I'll show you. So this is my this is a camera that I use. And what I did was I bought these two disc neodymium magnets that are quite powerful and I put some velcro on them because that actually helps keep helps me get them apart they're so powerful when they get together they're really quite hard to pry apart so on one magnet I mounted this mount which is for a, a Sony camera and on this uh, disc I mounted a GoPro mount which also works with this uh, SJ cam as well and so when I put them on the boat, the magnets just hold it in place here and I can turn it around and uh, that'll hold, it holds quite well. So that's how I do, that's how I do my camera on the boat. Okay, out to the water. Hi, it's me again, Ted, <clears throat> your uh, favorite Tuck Tech kayak owner. So listen, uh, the reason why primarily I bought my Tuck Tech kayak was because I wanted to go fishing in it. And uh, so one of the things that I've been really working on is um, enhancing my fishing experience in my Tuck Tech kayak. Now, specifically, I, I like to fly fish, although I I uh, spin spin cast as well, but but mostly uh, the things that I've done to the kayak to improve it or or whatnot have been uh, in an effort to improve my fly fishing. And most of it's because when you're sitting in the kayak, you're really down in the bottom of the kayak and you're really close to the water, and you're trying to cast from a seated position, basically with your butt right at water level with a fly rod, which is not not that easy. It's imagine if you, or basically it's like you're wading into water that's this deep and you're trying to fly cast from that. Um, it's not as easy as if you really kind of elevated above the water. So uh, later in the video I'll be out on the water with some different uh, seating configurations that I've been working on in an effort to enhance my angle of attack on the water with my fly rod and you'll see what that's all about but the other thing to get started with that um, you need if you're going to do fishing out of your boat at all unless you're just into trolling is you're going to need an anchor and I've had to learn a little bit about anchors in this process so I have uh, I have here what's called a grapple anchor this is a a three pound grapple anchor and uh, I really would have preferred a mushroom anchor but they were all out when I bought them and I needed an anchor so this is what I got I probably also could have got away with a one and a half pound grapple anchor but again this is what they had in stock at Bass Pro Shops so grapple anchors uh, have a little bit of a learning curve to them and I'm going to show you what I've done with my grapple anchor um, that might help you along your way. So when you're fishing, if you're fishing in a, trying to sit in a fixed spot and cast and retrieve, even if you're spin casting, 
uh, you're going to want an anchor because you'll find that you're going to drift and uh, you might drift out of out of the place where you're trying to fish and you might drift into where other people are trying to fish or any kinds of things so an anchor is important for that um, a grapple anchor works by it's like a grappling hook you see these these leaves open up and when they drag on the bottom they bite into the bottom and that's what keeps you still. They're actually particularly good for when you have a current because they're really good for when you're being pulled in a certain direction and then and that just makes it bite harder and harder into into the bottom of wherever you are. And where, uh, in the places where I fish which tend to be kind of sandy muddy bottom lakes I don't necessarily need a grapple anchor uh, a mushroom would have been fine, but yeah, you get what you get. So look, there's a lot of videos on YouTube that you can watch about anchors and grapple anchors, uh, which you, you you should. But since you're watching my video, I'm going to tell you some things about grapple anchors. So by the book, if you're going to use a grapple anchor, and this is what you should do if you got a big boat and a big grapple anchor, is you're supposed to use a chain, what's called an anchor chain. And you see there's a there's a point here uh, for fixing a rope to and there's a point here for fixing a rope to. The thing about a grapple anchor is is when it's down on the bottom of whatever body of water you're in, if you pull on the top anchor point here, that pulls it harder and harder into the bottom. If you really want to get the grapple anchor to release, you need to actually pull it up by the by the bottom hang point here. Now, like I said, uh, most of the places that I'm fishing at are don't have bottom snags where this anchor is going to bite really hard, and I'm able to just pull the anchor out by lifting it from the top anchor point. Uh, if you're going strictly by the book with anchors, you would use a, what's called an anchor chain, and there would be a chain that would go from the tail to the front, and then you would actually uh, attach your rope to the chain, and then when you're going forward, the rope would slide along the anchor chain and grab here and pull it, and then when you want to lift your anchor out of the water, you'd actually have to reverse your boat back up so that when you're pulling on your anchor, your, your uh, point slides back along the um, anchor chain and pulls the anchor out from the back. What I've done is I've put a zip tie here on my anchor and it's around the, I guess the neck of it or whatever, with the tag that comes up. I've tied my rope to the bottom of the anchor and I've run it up and I've looped it, you see, I've looped it through here, and then I've put the zip tie through that loop. And what, in effect, that does is it makes it as though when I'm lowering my anchor and pulling on my anchor, it's as though I'm pulling it from the top here and not from the bottom. Now, I've, now so uh, when I'm pulling on it with that zip tie through the loop like that, it's as though I'm pulling on the bottom of the or on the top of the anchor. And if I ever got the anchor really lodged on something that I couldn't just pull it up out of the mud from the top point here, if I pull hard enough on this, you see the zip tie will let go of it, and then I will be pulling from the bottom of the anchor, which will dislodge it and pull it up. That's if the thing gets really stuck and I have to pull really hard on it. Otherwise, I've never had that problem. I can just leave the anchor like this, the way I normally have it, and it works great. So when I'm out on the water again, I'll show you how I have that hooked up to my boat. I've got about a, I've got 100 feet of uh, nylon parachute cord that I've wound up on to um, an extension cord spool that I cut down a little bit that I bought at uh, you know Home Depot for like three bucks, which is great. That keeps my my rope handy. 
and I do need 100 feet because I, I regularly fish in lakes that are well over 50 feet deep. So I need, you know, 100 feet of line. Then I also picked up, get it out here so you can see it, this really cool carabiner that also has a place where you can tie off with where when you run the rope through it that locks it in place. So I've, I've run a short line here from the carabiner to another carabiner and this I clip to the handle on the uh, stern of my tuck tech and then this rope is long enough that I can reach this when I'm sitting in my seat. I just reach behind me and I can grab it and I can easily pull the anchor up or let it down, tie it off, and then this little piece here, I'll show you when I'm out on the water, actually will uh, clip right onto the, uh, the lip of the Tuck Tech kayak and it'll hold it in position really nicely there. And it makes for a pretty convenient and easy to access and uh, you know, use anchor in my boat because when you you find when you're in your boat, it's not always easy to be turning around and doing all sorts of kind of stuff. Uh, you feel sometimes a little bit like an astronaut in a space uh, capsule when you're in the in the cockpit of your of your kayak. So um, this this makes <coughs> running the managing my anchor and my anchor line really super easy. So that's what I've got to show you here in the office. The next clip I'll be out on the water and I'll actually show you the different um, seating configurations that I've tried out in the boat to uh, improve my fly fishing casting and then I'll also do a uh, I'll show you how I've done the anchor actually live out on the water. All right, so that's it. Next time you see me, I'll be out on the water. Okay, see you soon. Hey, so here we are at the lake and uh, got my boat all loaded up, all my fishing gear, see the crate, the stadium chair, fishing rod, I got the anchor in the back. This thing starts to get full after a while, but uh, let's get it in the water and uh, see what we can do. So, one of the things that I've learned with this, this stadium chair that I got, because I've been out here a few times now, is it's nice because it gives me about four inches, maybe maybe a little bit more than that, off the bottom of the boat, uh, which is great because if I get some water in the boat when I'm, uh, when I'm getting in, I'm not sitting in water like I am with just the camp chair sometimes, which, you know, depending on my mood, you know, I don't want to get wet. But it's still low enough that it, that it uh, makes paddling nice and easy and uh, relaxing. It's a good, actually, it's actually a really nice seat to, to row in, to paddle in. Um, it does give me a little bit of height over the water that makes fishing a little bit easier, but um, as you'll see in a minute, it's not its not the same as sitting up on that fishing crate. Uh, I was just 
talking to someone on the shore as I was setting this up, but they gave me another uh, uh, idea as well, which is you could just get a, a small cooler and put the cooler behind your seat and make that your just sit on your cooler, and then you've uh, got your refreshing beverages in there and uh, all that kind of stuff. You're ready to go. That's that might be my next investment. <laughs> it's, a, it's a small cooler to sit on. So I'm out here pretty good. I'm not here far enough that I can do my little demo here. Let me uh, get up just a touch further. Okay. Get the paddle down. bit of wind so I'm gonna drift. But uh, just this four inches from this chair really makes fly casting way better than um, if I was sitting all the way down on the floor of the boat, uh, which was actually, I found that to be quite challenging. Um, let's see here. I'm gonna take the backpack. Rearrange some things here in the boat a little bit. chair. I'm going to drop my anchor, get the grapples open. space and you gotta be careful with your balance and move slowly a little bit sometimes. Alright. Tie it off. Latched on the side of the boat. Perfect. Now now I can really get to some fish. There. Last night I was out here and I did some filming. Unfortunately, I didn't get any sound on it whatsoever. Total bummer. But uh, there was a hatch on last night and the bluegills were just, just ripping it up. I uh, was probably caught a bluegill on every other cast last night. dry fly and um, interestingly enough though there wasn't any any uh, signs of trout whatsoever which suggests to me that the, the extra warm weather has either driven them down in the to the bottom of the lake where the water's cooler or this lake gets a lot of pressure and I don't think it's been stocked in several months so I think there's a fairly good chance that there's actually low low fish volume here in this lake right now when it comes to the trout. So 
like all good YouTube fishing videos, I don't expect to catch anything. I'll put some footage, just some soundless footage at the end of this video of me catching some bluegill last night to uh, maybe make this video a little bit more entertaining. Anyway, so uh, let's do a little bit more paddling. Bring my line in. I'm not really in a good spot right now. So one of the things that I found in experimenting with this setup is, uh, well, i got to bring up my anchor, don't I? No, I just started. my anchor here just at, just just in the water just hanging off the side of my boat that seems to work pretty well when I'm moving around so one of the things about having this milk crate situation and sitting up as high as I am is that paddling is not as good um, partly because now my paddle isn't really quite a good length for it it also makes the boat a lot more tippy, and so not really able to as effectively uh, paddle myself around. So this is not really how I would recommend um, having the boat set up if you had a, a long distance that you wanted to try to paddle somewhere. You'd be much better off. Um, getting down onto a lower seat in the boat where you're just going to have more effective balance and uh, angle of attack with your paddle in the water. For the sake of this video, though, I'm not going to bother. Anyway, so there you have it. That's kind of my, my fishing setup in my tuck pack. I've got my camp chair sitting on a milk crate. That's my kind of perched up seat for doing my most effective fly casting. Uh, and then you saw my little foldable stadium chair. That actually works really well. It's a good compromise between being able to paddle really well and still having good height above the water to have a good fly cast. Now, uh, I didn't have any of it today, but um, if you were to be fishing with like a spinning setup or some kind of bait casting setup, all, all of this wouldn't have wouldn't mean anything because uh, you know it's a, it, the casting is so much different. I I, uh, I spin cast in my boat and I just sit um, on my uh, camp chair on the bottom of the uh, kayak and I don't have any problems that way. All of this that I've done really has been in an effort to try to uh, facilitate fly fishing better. Um, so there you have it. I'm gonna, go to, I'm gonna go, uh, try to find a good place to maybe catch a few fish before dinner time. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, and uh, I'll see you out on the water in a Tuck Tech kayak maybe. All right. Bye-bye.